Hello, everyone. Um, this is uh, Kiran Pandey, uh, the course uh, director of this program. Uh, we welcome you all to this uh, program, which talks about use of uh, data on environment and um, the GI systems. Uh, we have around 150 participants in this program. It's uh, good to know this. And these participants are from India and across the world. Um, so welcome you, uh, everyone to this program. Uh, today, we are going to have the first live session. Uh, as you all know, we have three such live sessions. Today is the first one. And now, what will we cover in this program? So very with you. See, the program is all about using two GIs to uh, source, uh, to analyze and to visualize special data. Okay. Uh, today with me, I have my colleague, Mr. Pulaha Roy. He is a social data scientist at a magazine down to earth. It's a magazine that we publish in our organization. He is in charge of uh, the map section in our data center. Okay. So he's the one who will take us around how do we use QGIS to extract data, to analyze data, and to visualize data. And uh, uh, there's one more thing. Um, so the entire course module has been put up on Moodle for you to access. And I hope each one of you know how to access the Moodle platform. Yes or no? Please raise your hands and just say yes or no. Are you okay with using Moodle? Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, so that, that's great to hear. Now, uh, secondly, how many of you have uh, gone through the module number one to be, again, a frank answer? Yes or no? The first module. Ma'am, uh, the standard. introduction. Uh, now, why asking this is because uh, in the first module, we have put up a video presentation by Dr. Shirish Ravan. Okay. Now, that video presentation will give you an idea about what is this program all about and why this is relevant to all of us. Right? So um, that's how we begin the program. And so as we proceed with the program, uh, this definitely has a technical component and also has a theory component, okay? The entire theory part is there on Moodle, but these live sessions are all about talking about the technical part of it, and especially to be very precise on how do you use QGIS. So let me repeat, the live sessions is only about the technical part. This is the technical tutorial that we are going to do to live sessions. And the entire content is there for you to access on Moodle platform. Is that okay? Am I clear? Yes or no? Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's great to hear. Uh, the, the, one more message that we want to give very clearly to each one of you is, while CSC is doing this program, QGIS is a known software. It's a known program software. It's not, not at all new, new to uh, uh, any of us. But... We are here to understand how we can use this in the area of communication. That's your uh, 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 keyword, okay? We're going to learn to use QGIS to communicate our ideas, our research, our, uh, our own work, okay? Uh, that's the uh, uh, purpose of the program. So as you learn this tool, you also know how to use this for communication. I'll repeat again. Uh, and uh, at the end of the program, what we expect from each one of you is a short project. It's a short assignment. So the word is very scary, but the word project is very scary, but it's a short assignment that each one of you will be expected to submit to us, okay? And that, as we proceed, we will guide you to the assignment, okay? So don't worry, it's not that difficult to, at all to uh, complete the project work. It's very simple, okay? And so now, uh, over to my colleague, Kula Roy, and so he will take you around on why UGIS uh, <clears throat> Uh, should be used in the area of environment conservation, how we are practicing it at our own organization, and what is the experience. And then by the end of this uh, today's session, what we expect is you should learn how to install QGIS. Okay, that's the basic key takeaway and the relevance of QGIS for people working in the area of environment. Is it okay? Is the purpose of the today's session clear to everyone? Yes or no? Yes. Thank yes. you. Pula, over to you now. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Thank you for coming for this uh, GIS session. Uh, I'm Pulao Rai. I'm a data journalist, senior data journalist with the uh, Down to Earth. Uh, so I do a lot of maps and I analyze a lot of spatial data 
and I do a lot of stories for the magazine as well, also standout visuals. Uh, you can check out my uh, portfolio here, some of the works that I have done over the years. You can check it out here. Uh, so uh, you can just like, uh, it's there in the slide, so I wouldn't go through it so much. Uh, what I would like to do is I'll start with the slide here. Yeah. So it's the first slide here. And we'll start with the basic, what is GIS? And that's why we are all here. Uh, just one minute. Yeah, so what is GIS basically? So GIS here, according to USGS, is basically it's a computer system that analyzes and displays geographically referenced information. So what is geographically referenced information? It's basically uh, any spatial data which has geographic uh you know coordinates so it can be data about your neighborhood or it can also be data about uh the world if you zoom out about the world as long as it's about uh, any geography we are talking about so gis deals with that in a short way that's the most basic definition i can give to you if you uh yeah uh, can can everyone hear me oh. i just one minute i'll use the other Uh, is it better now? Ma'am, is it better now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's better? Okay, yes. great. So this is the, the shortest uh, definition of US uh, of GIS, basically. So if, if you're interested, you can do a Google search by yourself and you'll find uh, a, a more in-depth definition of it. Uh, so the next point is basically, uh, so why should we use GIS to solve our everyday problems? And I think the best example I can give you about uh, GIS problem solving is uh, so this map that you see here. This map was drawn by a physician called Dr. John Snow in 1854. He was a physician, by the way. He wasn't a map maker or anything like that. He was a physician. And this map, what it basically shows is a neighborhood of Soho. Uh, the neighborhood is Broad Street in Soho in England, London. And so you see these black polygons here. These are basically houses. Now, what, what are these houses? So what he was trying to do, what Dr. John Snow was trying to do was he was, he was trying to investigate cholera cases, cholera outbreak in the neighborhood. And when he was investigating it, he found a pattern basically. So the pattern was all these black polygons which show these are the affected houses when like they had uh, registered uh, cases of cholera. All of these houses were close to a water pump. Now this water pump was the one that was uh, supplying the water to the neighborhood. And uh, he realized like his hypothesis was basically it could be that the water pump was the main issue because cholera is a waterborne disease. So he probably must have thought that maybe the water is polluted. So he asked the officials to do away with the water pump. And within some time, the cases drastically came down and his hypothesis stood correct. And later they realized basically, uh, so the neighborhood, so the, so the water pump that was supplying the water to the neighborhood, it was coming from sections of the Thames River, which was sewage polluted. So they were, get, they were getting sewage polluted water. So that's why there was a rise in cholera cases. But anyway, uh, not getting into the details of it, but this is probably the oldest use case of GIS, the oldest use case of GIS. So if doctors can use it, if physicians can use GIS, anyone can use GIS, I, th I feel. So it has a very multidisciplinary uh, usage of it. Uh, so coming to our second point now, uh, yeah. So and how do we use this GIS technology? Now GIS technology can be used by a lot of softwares. There's ArcGIS Pro by ESRI. There is uh, the one that we are looking into is QGIS. And the map that you see here is that uh, the map that you see here was rendered by rendered by me on QGIS. The, the map basically shows the how the world is going to look 250 million years from now. So as you can see, this was all rendered on QGIS and QGIS is an open source software. Um, what I mean by open source is basically so uh, it's for free. But the first thing is that it's for free. Everything is for free there. Unlike, uh, sorry, this... Is there any question? No. Uh, so, uh, yeah. 
so it's it's everything there is for free unlike ArcGIS, uh where basically it's a subscription based software but qgis is open source and why it's open source is because the code that was used to build this software is out on public domain so if you're an expert in coding or anything you can actually make changes to the code to the build code and that's why it's called open source Are we change the next slide? Just one thing. Ah, huh, ah, huh, okay. Yeah. So as we have spoken already about QGIS, and here's another case study of QGIS, basically. So initially, we had spoken about the uh, the the oldest you the oldest case study of QGIS where Dr. John Snow had used uh, the uh, Q, John Snow had used GIS. Here's another case study, and this map was done on QGIS. So what this map shows uh, map shows is basically it's a it's a map of uh, the Nameri Tiger Reserve in the Shonitpur district of Assam. It's a, a northeast Indian state. And uh, this map basically shows tiger presence in the uh, in the tiger reserve in the Nameri tiger reserve. So the yellow ones, as it's as in the legend, it shows it's uh, the yellow ones are basically where you have where they have seen a tiger presence, and the green ones are basically to these grids are where they haven't seen any tiger uh, tiger presence there. I don't want to get into the details of it, but you can find the case study on the QGIS website itself. So so do go and have a look. Um, huh. So here's another one like uh, how we use QGIS. Sorry. Now you can see. Now we can. Huh. So the next one, the next slide is uh, so how we use QGIS at CSE and all these visuals that you see. Don't make it full screen because yeah. I'm having some issue with it. Now you can see. Did you? Yeah, sorry for the interruption. Yeah. So the next slide here is basically how we use QGIS at CSE. I do a lot of my analysis and a lot of analysis and visuals on, uh, on QGIS. And these are some of the examples of uh, how we have used QGIS for better storytelling. Uh, the first one is, uh, it was a visual based on a study by IIT Gandhinagar where they had done an analysis of drought over the years and uh, we analyzed it further and came up with a story of our own. I won't get into details of what it exactly said, but in a nutshell, it's basically uh, how decades, how droughts have increased in uh, over the decades from 1901, I'm guessing, to 2022. Uh, the second one is about soil loss in India. And as you can see, like some of the states that I've seen a lot of soil losses uh, we have Assam, you have Odisha, you have the north, uh, you have the northern states of Himachal, Jammu, uh, Jammu and Kashmir, and Uttarakhand. The third one here is it shows how migration will look. Uh, how migra how migration will look in the future. It was actually part of the of an earlier slide that I've shown, like how the world will look to fifty million years from now. So this this visual was also part of that series. And here we are talking about how migration is going to look to 50 million years from now. The, the data was rendered on QGIS and then I did some styling on another software called Blender, but we won't get into that. Uh, we are sticking to QGIS for the time being. Now the, here, the, the final one is a GIF on uh, snow cover loss uh, this Jan January. And you can see the differential. Let me just play the GIF here. And yeah, yeah, you can see 
So you have January 6, 2023, and then you have the you have January 11, 2024 uh, snow cover, and you can see the difference. The white thing uh, fades out when compared to last year. So that's about it. And now let us get action. Now let us get started with the main thing why we are here for. Let's get started with QGIS. So what I would like you guys to do is go to this. Uh, uh, so I would like I, I would like you to go to this link. Uh, if you have the slide uh, here, so you can just go to the page. I have to share the screen. Just... Yeah. Yeah, so if you can see, if you have clicked, uh, clicked on the no slide, there's, there, there's a link there on QGIS. So what I would like you to do is if you're a Mac user, I think this is the, for the first, the first year that you see long-term version for Mac, I would like you to download that and install it on your system. Just follow the instructions there. I mean, uh, nothing very complicated, just, sorry. Is there any question? Share yeah, the link. Hi, 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 this is Raj. Yeah. I have this one, uh, 1.3.36 version of the QGIS. Okay. Yeah, that will do, uh, that will do, Harsh. But, uh, but just in case, like, uh, and that goes for everyone. If you are, if you already have QGIS installed, and that's completely fine. But in case okay. if you're new to QGIS and if you're just getting started with QGIS, I would suggest that you uh, download this one, the long-term version for Mac OS 3.34. If you're a Mac user and if you okay. are a, a if you're a Windows user, then you just scroll down. You have other yeah. platforms, and here you have the download for Windows. You can use for long-term version okay. for Windows 3.34. The version remains okay. the same, just that the system is different. I will. Uh, Share the link here in the comments section um, so that everyone can just uh, uh, see the link. So uh, just get started, just uh, uh, just uh, install, uh, install that thing. Uh, just follow the instruction uh, manual. That's, it's nothing very complicated, just your usual uh, click uh, uh, and you can get started with KGIS. So I'll take some time off here. You guys can go ahead and just install it on your system. If you guys have any have any issues, do let do let us know in the uh, comment section, and we'll try to help you out in case.
Is anyone else having any issues with uh, downloading it? Uh, you can write on the comment section. Sir, uh, I'm doing I... late, sir. Please tell me the link, sir. Please repeat ah, sure. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it's on the comment section. I'll just post it on the comment section again. Uh, just one minute. Uh, you can see the comment section. And now, so once you click on that, uh, once you click on that link that I've just posted on the comment section, if you're a Windows user, sir, you just scroll down. Okay, I'll just share my screen so that uh, uh, this one. So if you're a Windows user, sir, uh, so here's the page that's going to open. So download QGIS for your platform. There's the long-term version for Mac. If you're If you're a Mac user, then please go ahead. But if you're a Windows user, sir, just scroll down. You have the other, other the other platform download for Windows. So you can click on the long-term version for Windows 3.34 LTR. That's a long-term release. And that's the most stable version of QGIS in the sense that it won't crash so much. Is that fine? Is uh, has, has everyone been able to download it? Is anyone having any issues? Can let me know. Are we good to go then? Is it is it all installed? Okay, I'll wait for another five minutes. Uh, just go ahead. But if anyone's having any issues, do let us know in the comment section, or you can just like uh tell us here on the video itself okay so my qgis is saying downloading but unable to see i think you should have to go to your root folder uh, uh mr bunsen uh just go to the root folder where you have where normally all your softwares get downloaded or what you can do is like if you're a windows user just go to that uh that search uh the search uh, um, option here in the toolbar and the desktop and just look for QGIS if it's, if it's been downloaded. You have to click on the setup file to get it installed as well. So once you've complete, once you've completed downloading it, you also have to install it on your system. Hi, yeah, Prati, go ahead. Uh, can you unmute yourself? Unmute. Yeah, oh, yeah go sorry. ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask if we, I already have a 3.36.0 version. Yeah, yeah, Should that's I... fine, that's fine. No, 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 that's fine. If you have QGIS, that's totally fine. I would suggest like if, if there's a, uh, if, you, if you're using QGIS for the first time, then you might have just go ahead and download the most stable version. Because I normally work on the stable version and it's a little better than your other releases. We, I think now you have a 3.38. Initially, when I started, I, I started off with version 3, 3.00. So that was a long time, couple of five, six years back. But you could, whatever version you have, that wouldn't make much of a difference. But if you're a new, a new user, I would suggest that you go ahead and just download the 3.34 version. That's about it. So not an issue. Whatever version is, not an issue. Not a new user, but if this crashes or has any issues, I'll reinstall the new version. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, after the after the session, you might as just like go ahead and just download yeah. the long term version of it. So that's fine. Okay. That's absolutely... Thank you so much. So should we go? So should we go ahead now with the uh, uh, QGIS and let's get started with QGIS? Is everyone okay with it? Don't worry. Uh, everything is there on Moodle. This whatever session, it's the first session, everything, all the slides are out there on Moodle. So it's not an issue. So just follow along. Just follow along. There's absolutely no issue. Just follow along the steps and everything. But I hope everyone has been able to install it on this. So system. we shall go for the long term version for Windows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the long term version, sir. 3.34. The latest version for Windows 3.34. 3, 3. Just go for the 3.34 version. Okay, sir. 
Yeah, no issue. So I'll get started with QGIS now. Is that okay with everyone? Still downloading, okay. sir. Ha, you sir, you just follow along. Is uh, the all the so basically whatever I'm teaching in this live session, it's be it has been uploaded on Moodle. All the slides are there on Moodle, so it shouldn't be an issue. And just in case if you miss out on something, we are always there to get in touch. So you can you, you can get in touch with me. Absolutely no issues. Ha, so I'll just get I'll just get started. So you can start your so you can just open QGIS. Uh, hopefully, like uh, in Windows, you can just go to the search bar and just uh, search for QGIS. If you're a Mac user, I'll share my screen here. Uh, just one minute. It's going to take some time when you open for the first time. It usually takes around one, two minutes to get everything loaded and everything, all the plugins and everything. So uh, just be a little patient about it. I'm just trying to open it on my system as well. And it's taking some time. So that's totally fine. Nothing to be, nothing to freak out. Uh, Ha, so I'll share my screen now. Let me just minimize everything. Yeah. So everyone can see my screen. Uh, you, 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 everyone can see my screen here. Okay, great. So this is basically the interface of QGIS, and you have to get familiarized with the with the interface here. And it's totally fine if you freak out for the first time if you see so many buttons side in the same. It happens to everyone. So not an issue there, and it's a good sign basically. If you guys are if you guys are freaking out, it's a good sign that shows your curiosity as well. So the first thing is yeah, let me just go walk you through the interface first. I'll take some minutes to walk you through the interface. So this one that you see here is the browser panel. So what the browser panel does is, here are all your di directories. So like you say home. So, so I'm using Mac system, probably in Windows, it'll be a little different, but, but the idea of it is going to be the same. The browser will contain all your directories where, wherever you uh, store. So if you download any data or anything, you're going to find it here. So like if I go to home, so it has, you see, it has desktop, it has documents, it has downloads, all those stuff. Normally this is where, uh, I mean, if you're, if, if you're trying to load any data, it's you, you, you have to do it from the browser panel. And this is the layers panel. So the layers panel is where you put the data from the browser panel, you drag and drop it to the layers panel. And here's another toolbar called the, I think it's called the manage toolbar. And here you can also open a lot of data. Uh, a lot of data will get, we'll get, we'll talk about it as, as we go forward in our, in our tutorial. And here you have some other stuff as well. We'll walk through it one by one, so it shouldn't be an issue. And this that you see here, this right now there's no display as such because we haven't put any, haven't loaded any data as that. But this is where you normally display your data. So let's get started with our, let's get started with. But the first thing is, what data are we going to use? So so QGIS needs some data to display, right? So the first thing is what I'll do is I'll share the slide with you. Uh, let me go back to the slide. Yeah. So, so, we, so is that, has anyone heard about shapefile here? How many people know shapefile here? Can you see in some answers here in the comment section? Does anyone know what's a shapefile? Anyway, okay. I see a couple of people who know what's a shapefile, but that's fine. I'm going to walk you through what, what is a shapefile. So a shapefile, basically, it's a vector data format. So what's a vector data format? A vector data format basically means that no matter how much you stretch it, it's never going to pixelate. Say like a, 
if you have guys have seen a PNG file or a JPEG file, those ones have pixels in it. It's described as pixels. And pixels, with pixels, the thing is, the, mo the moment you stretch it, it's going to pixelate. Like, you know, the picture is going to get uneven or distorted or something. With shape file, it never gets, it, it's, it doesn't distort. No matter how much you stretch it, it doesn't distort. So that's more or less the gist of what a shape file is. I'll, I'll leave it to you guys to explore more on what a shape file is. But for the time being, what I would like you to do is, here's the link. Just go, just go to the slide and just click on this link. I'll also, I'll, I'll also, uh, we'll also share the link with you uh, on the comment section. Uh, and let me share my screen. Uh, can everyone see see my screen? Uh, let me just share my screen. Yeah, let me just share my screen once more. Yeah. Yeah, so this is natural log, uh, and na okay. Can everyone see my? Yeah, it's, everyone can see my screen, right? Yeah. So this is basically natural log, and natural log is a data repository for shape files and other things as well. For the time we are concentrating on shape file, but it also has other uh, geospatial formats as well. Well, in in you can. Explore it in your free time. For the time, we're going to stick to the shape file, and it's a and uh, uh, I'll just copy the link and share it in the comment section for everyone to. Just one minute. Yeah, I'll just share it here so that everyone can hear. Yeah. yeah, so. Yeah, I've shared the I've, I've shared it in the comment section so everyone can see it. Just click on it. Yeah, so let's get started with uh shape files in natural earth. And so uh, once you have opened natural earth, it's uh I'll again talk uh, I'll again walk you through what is natural earth. So natural earth is basically a repository, data repository, you, you can say, where they store a lot of uh, geospatial data in, in forms of shapefile. You have other forms as well, other formats as well, like raster and everything. I won't get into the raster. The raster, I'll I'll, I'll talk about it later in the VA tutorial. Uh, but for the for the time being, we are concerned about shapefile. So what I would like you to do is, uh, you go here, you scroll down, you see admin zero countries, and then you download the first one download countries which is a 4.4.7 mb file let me let me also download it with you guys we'll download it together uh just just click on that and and the download will start and you can save it wherever you want to just remember where you are saving it that's the most important thing just remember where you are saving it and i'm going to save it in my download uh, folder so just go ahead and download it and once I'm done, so I'll stop. I'll, I'll stop my uh, screen share for the time being and I'll move to the QGIS screen share. So once you have downloaded the file, which is a 4.7 MB file, so now we are back in QGIS. So what I would like you to do is, so now you go to the browsers panel. Uh, there will be a yeah, call, option called home. It doesn't matter if you are a Mac, Mac user or a, a Windows user. Just go to that root folder. Just navigate to that root folder where you have saved the file. So I saved it in downloads. It's going to take, so if there are a lot of files, it's going to take some time to open the, that thing. And there, uh, let me see what, what, is, what was the name of the, uh, any 10 okay so the name of the file would be something like this let me show you yeah any 10 any any 10 admin zero countries if you find this file in the root folder just go ahead and here's the dot this is what we want the dot shape file dot shp that's the extension that's the extension of shape file 
what you do is just drag it here just just click on it and just drag it to the layers the layers panel and yeah here we go did everyone follow me if anyone has a problem just write it just uh, just write it in the comment section is did everyone follow me Great. can you do it once sure. again Ah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll just do it once more. So I'll just walk you through again. Okay. So I'll just walk, walk you through again. Uh, let me just go back to the browser's panel. So once you have downloaded the file from Natural Earth, so here's the browser panel. You go to the home section in the browser's panel. You navigate to the, fold, the root folder where you have downloaded. In my system, it's download. You can download anywhere on your system. That's absolutely fine. In my uh, system, it's in the uh, download section. And then you go and navigate to this file called any 10 something. I don't remember the exact name of it, but it's going to be similar to this. Any 10 admin zero countries. See here. So if you have a triangle, a small triangle here, just click on it. It'll open, it'll expand. And then you have the dot shape, SHP. That is the extension of shape file. So whenever you see a dot SHP, you know it's a shape file extension, okay? So, and then you expand on this, or you, I, I don't think you also have to expand on it. Just, just click on this countries like this and just drag it to your layer section. That's it. If you're good. Yes, the color of the countries is coming green. Is that, that is different. Yeah, that is fine. Uh, that is fine. That shouldn't be a problem. That shouldn't be an issue. That's absolutely fine. I mean, they do a random shuffle. So they do a random shuffle of uh, coloring the year. That is fine. We can change the color. I'll walk you through that as well. But let's for a moment just see what is here, basically. that I mean, we have opened the file. That's absolutely, that's okay. But now let's go ahead and let's investigate what is all there. So one of the things that you will do a lot if you're using QGIS, one of the things that you will do a lot is you click on the, you right click on the layers on this layer, right click on it. And you see this open attribute table. You see this open attribute table, just click on it. And it opens a dialog box. And what the dialog box shows is basic the properties, the data points that it contains. Okay, so you have Indonesia, you have some data here. Uh, like you have a population, you have econo e economy, emerging region, lower middle income. So you have other data points as well. I'm not going to walk through all the data points. But just for the timing, I want to show what the attribute table does. It, it basically contains the data point, okay? So... If you're looking into a, a, any specific data, this is the place where you check out what field you are looking into. Right now, we don't need the data from here because we'll be using another layer of data points. So we don't need the data from here. But a lot of times, if you want to do map just through natural earth, if you want to show, say, if you want to make a population map of it, uh, there was a population field here. If I'm not wrong, let me just go through it once more. Huh. Population, EST population estimate, I'm guessing. One, Sorry, so we're not able to see the attribute screen in your screen share. Uh, oh, can everyone see? No? Uh, so you are, I think you're only sharing the QJA screen. You're not sharing the attribute screen. So it's maybe oh, better oh, if you share okay, your okay, display okay, okay. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. My bad. Huh. So now everyone can see the attribute here. Great, great. So I'll start. I'll start from I'll start from first. How so you open it. Okay. okay. So what you do is, sir, uh, you go to the layers. So in the layers panel, you have the any ten admin zero countries that layer. You just right click on it. You just okay. I'll just walk you through once more. I'll just walk you through once more. Let me just. Uh... I'll just walk you through once more. So here's the screen. I'll, I'll start from the beginning. 
here's the screen. You, you right click on this layer and then you have the open attribute table. You just click on that and a dialog box is going to open. And I'll share the dialog box uh, thing as well right now. And look something like this. So everyone, so everyone is here, is on the same page here with me. Yeah. And the dialog box is open and here's where all the fields are basically. We have a lot of data here as well from Natural Earth. It's a preloaded data that you can work on in your spare time. I'll just walk you through some of some of them. So, like if you are say, if you're making a population map, a population choropleth map, what is a choropleth oh, map? I'll sorry. talk, I'll talk about I'll talk about that later. Uh, but say like if you're making a population choropleth map, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Rachid, go ahead. Hi, sorry. Uh so yeah. my uh, screen is I think a bit different than what you're showing. Uh Right what now, is it showing? Stuck, can, you I, share, I, can you share a screen once? Yeah, sure. So I just wanted to get on the same. Oh, the I'm not allowed to share my screen. Oh. But okay, this is just admin admin or country, and then there is a list. It does say Indonesia, but it is not, not as detailed as it's not giving me the in in depth of like if you can allow me to share my screen, then I can. Uh, just one minute. Uh, just one minute. We're trying to there. There is a way that uh, in the right down corner there are two views or uh, view type. You can switch. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. I'm in. I'm switch in. to okay, table. Switch you. to table. So you have the switch to form view. Switch to table view. I think mine is form view. So you guys can switch the switch switch to form view here. So now is everyone. Everyone has the same page, same view. You can write on the comment section thank if you, anyone's having any issues here. Great. So uh, can I go ahead? Okay. How do we switch so, to form view? Uh, so see, uh, was, was it hush? Anyway, yes, uh, whoever asked the question. So if you see here, you. yeah, yeah, okay. So if you he, if you see here here so if you if you follow my pointer my mouse pointer yeah so someone's making a right uh yeah here so here's the switch to form view and here is the switch to table view it's in the right hand side corner of the dialog box it's in the right hand side corner of the dialog box got it got it thank you thank you great so now we have so we all have the same view I'm hoping. So you have a feature CLA, which is basically uh, admin zero country. I think it's some kind of code here. And then you have the thing that we want here is basically the population estimate. So if you're making a, a, a choropleth map of population estimate, I'm not getting into what is a choropleth map. We'll I'll talk about it later in the tutorial. But for the time being, if I would say if I'm trying to make a choropleth map of population estimate, you can use this field. And these are all preloaded data. Okay. So it comes with natural earth. So it's nothing like you have to, you know, get another data layer for it or anything like that. So it comes with uh, natural earth, but that's about it. But this, what I'm trying to uh, emphasize on is the fact that this attribute table is going to be a big help to us. And the more you work on QGIS, the more you want to use this attribute table, because that is the place for shape files, at least that is the place where you will see the data. So do keep in mind that the attribute table is a very important aspect of shapefile. So let me just now close this and let me go back to the QGIS uh, window. And let me just share my screen again. Yeah, so we're back to our QGIS screen. So now we have the countries, okay. And let me just do some styling here. So just follow along. So say if you want to change any color or change the stroke color of the count country boundaries, what you do is again you right click on the uh, again you right click on the layer itself, and then you go to properties, you go to properties, and then you click on it, and the dialog box will open. Let me just share the screen for that as well. We could see the property screen. Yeah, yeah, just one minute. I'm just sharing the property screen with you. And here's the property screen. 
No, I'm saying we could see it earlier as well. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So what you do is, so here's the property screen. You, you go to symbol. So you have information, you have source, you have symbology, you have labels, you have masks. So what we are concerned with is symbology because that's where you can change the color and everything. So go to symbology. You have the fill. Go to simple fill. And then what we want to do here is we are going to, we want a transparent layer. I'll tell you why we want a transparent layer because we're going to do we're going to load another data point here. So we don't need the color as of now. So we're going to either you can, you can just slide it here or you can just like click on it, transparent fill and both of them does the same job. So whatever you prefer, that's on you. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, fill style is fine. Stroke color is fine. Yeah, everything else is fine. So just for the time being, I'll, I'll, I'll again show you. Just click. So just, just, just come to symbology, simple fill, uh, and then you fill color, and then you just slide, you just slide down the slider, and yeah, and then what you do is just click on apply. So it'll apply the changes and then you hit OK. Then you hit OK. And here. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, just a quick question. Yeah, please. please. Uh, I'm, I'm not see. Uh, I am at the simple fill. Uh, yeah. What do you say? Dropbox. But I'm not yeah, able yeah, yeah, to yeah. do the slider or the transparent fill. Can you just show me again? Yeah, I'll just show you one second. Just one minute. Okay, I'll just show you for, from from the beginning. So you co you come to the you come to the layers uh yeah the the layer section. So you hit you click on property. You right click and you click on properties. We are not able and to there, see your screen. Yeah. So let me just share my screen. Just one minute. Now you can see. Yes. Now everyone yes, can yes. see. I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So this dialog box open. Were you able to follow me till now? Like the has the dialog box opened for you guys? Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. So now you go to symbology. Right. And then you go to single symbol. You go to simple fill here. You click on simple fill. You have the fill, then you go to simple fill, click on simple fill. Then you have the fill color. Here you click. And then you have the slider. So you just downgrade the slider. That's all you have to do. Just downgrade the slider or you can hit the transparent fill. Okay, I'll let me show you the transparent fill as well. So now you have the, now we have a complete fill. Now you just hit the transparent fill and it automatically does away with it, does away with the fill color. Or what you can do is you can just hit here. You can just click here and I'm guessing the slider would be here. So just downgrade it. Okay. Just like move your, move your pointer towards the left and it's going to downgrade the, it's going to do away with the fill here. As was it, was everyone able to follow me here? Yeah. Thanks a lot. Okay. Great. Okay. So I'll just move along now. Uh, let me just share my screen once more. I'm going to take some time for the effect to run that I'll share my screen. Okay, so we are back here. So the next thing, so now we have, so now we have the world map without color, without color, just the country boundaries. And that's all fine. But what I'd like you to guys to do is download another data set, which is basically the NASA fire activities. So basically, I'll share my slides again with you. So back to your slide and you come here, loading the fire activity data. So that's what we want here. And here you have the link. Uh, so Tanya will share the link with you. Pula. Hi Pula. Yeah, hi. hi. So uh, after the transparent thing, which we, we were doing. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was an apply button which was on your screen. Yeah. But I don't know why my screen is not showing that apply button. So is there an OK button? There is one one toggle uh, for draw effects. Do I want to do it with that? Can you share your screen once, sir? Yeah, yeah. I'm just sharing. Yeah.
you cannot share the screen while the participant other participant is sharing the screen yeah i think uh, you can uh, just minimize that screen and you'll see that uh, minimize the sense reduce the size you'll get that uh, apply button yeah uh, okay so what i would like you to do sir is just drag it on the top can you drag this dialog box somewhere because what's happening is so you have the apply button yeah so just drag it a little just increase the size of it just increase the size ha huh. yeah 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 there you go there you go apply just click on apply yeah so it's already transparent so it's already transparent that's you so you good to go yeah. earlier it earlier it was green actually now it's transparent thank you ha huh, ha huh. no i should no i should so i'll share my screen once more so i'll go back to the slide yeah so here so if, so if you have the slide it's about loading fire activity data the slide number 14 and here is the link what i would like you to do is and so tanya will just share it in the comment section go to the page just click on that link and it's going to open a link i'll share the screen as well now Uh, can you please share that link on the comment section? Yeah, yeah, in the comment section, it's there. It's there. So I'll go ahead with the yeah. Uh, so Kanya has shared it. So this is how the page is going to look. So this is the act active fire data of NASA. I won't get into the details of it, like what this data. Uh, is basically, in a nutshell, the data talks about like fire activity. So it detects fire from satellite. and it gives data in the form of latitude longitude so it's a point uh, uh point it's in the format of points basically coordinates basically so every point has a latitude and a longitude coordinate and that's all there is to it and what i would like you to do now is so you have the activify data you scroll down we don't want shape files for the time being what we are focusing on is a dot csv action and you see here dot text file csv what i would like you to do now is so you have the text file csv you have this modis 1 km verse so these are basically lenses used by the satellite what i would like you to do is you go to world you have the verse 375 snpp this is the one we are looking into verse 375 snpp you can if you if, if if you want more information on what is verse 375 just do a just do a google search and you will find it on the nasa website itself i won't get i won't get the details of it but what for the time being what i would like you to do is just click on the 24 hours so that basically gives us a data of fire activities globally in the last 24 hours so just click on it and it'll start downloading i'll save it again in my uh, download version in, in my download folder you guys go ahead and save it Anywhere that you want, my is in verse. Okay, and it's done. So now let me just go back to QGIS. I'll share my screen once more. Yeah. So, and here basically, so once you have downloaded, once you have once you have downloaded something new, so you see you have the browser version. and here's the refresh this is the refresh option that you have so do click on it so that will refresh your folder because now you have something a uh, new input as well so that way qgis also knows like okay we have a new input and we'll just refresh it so that we can get the new uh, file that we want see here you have this uh, this uh, this thing that's uh, going on so that shows that it has refreshed so here you have the download i have i have saved it in my download you please uh, go to the root folder where you guys have saved it I have saved it in my download, and here I'll just navigate to. I think it was something called Swami, if I'm not wrong. Let me just see. Yeah, I think it's here. Yeah, dot csv. But so you you guys remember how I down so how I loaded the shape file data, right? But how do we load the csv data? It's a it's a dot csv extension. I'm hoping you guys are. familiar with the dot csv you must have used it in excel but even if you guys haven't that's totally fine 
I'll walk you through how you can, uh, uh, you know, load a .csv extension on QGIS because a simple drag and drop won't do anything. Let me just show you why. I'll drag it here. It, the layer is there, but it doesn't show anything on, on our screen, right? It doesn't show anything. So what I'll do is I'll just delete the year for the time being. So you have the manage, so you have the side browser here, something like this. Everyone has this, I'm guessing. But anyway, uh, either you no, can go. Sorry. Yeah, okay. I, I was hoping it'll be some it'll be a little different for you guys. Maybe I customize my setting a little bit. If you guys have this, that's totally fine. If you don't, that's also totally fine. What I'll do is so here you have the layers option. You have the layers option. You click on this layer. You you go to navigate to add layer, add layer, and then you go to add delimited text layer. I'll walk through you again. You go to layer, you go to add layer, and then you have add delimited text layer. You just click on that. And let me share the screen once more. Or do I have to share the screen? Or Yeah, I'm guessing I have to. Oh, let me just share the screen. Oh, no, no, it was visible. Oh, it was visible? Okay, great. Uh, is that the one? Share, yeah. So this is the dialog box that's going to open. If you're loading a CSV file, this is the way you have to load it. Normally, I would have taken that the, the panel on the right-hand side, uh, sorry, the left-hand side, but maybe you guys might be having a little different uh, configuration. So that's why the viewing might be a little different, but that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with your software or you download it wrong, nothing wrong with it. The more you work, you will be able to customize your view according to how you want it. I have customized my view according to this way because I feel it's a little more comfortable that way. But anyway, that's fine. But this is the way you go about it. You go to layer and then you uh, just uh, follow along. You go to layer, then you add layer and then you add delimited layer and this, and this thing is going to open. Here's the file name. You hit on this dot, there are three dots it's called browse. You click on that. And there's something like this is going to open. You just uh, go navigate to where you have saved the file. I have saved it in downloads and I'm going to click on this and I'm going to open it. And so you have, so now you have the layer name and have that all that shows. So what I'll do now is, is the X field is the Y field. So normally what happens is they automatically detect the X field and Y field, but in cases where they don't, what you have to do is, so we know that X field is longitude and Y field is latitude. So what I'll do is in the X field, I'll say longitude and in the Y field, I'll say latitude. And then you see, you, yeah. Anyway, so I'll just add it now. I think there's some issue. Let me just check it once more myself. Just one minute. At my end, this add button is not uh, 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 lit up. Yeah, so just, yeah, so can, so can you just drag it? But that's oh. fine. Let me, I, I think there has been some issue with it. So let me just uh, check it from my end once more. Just give me a, just give me a moment. Sir, I think the geometry CRS is to be selected. Sorry? 
to be selected. If you select that, then uh... so under the latitude longitude, there is an option for geometry CRS. And in that, what you have Geomet uh, uh, so no, no, uh, so geometry CRS here, yeah, I have it selected. It's a projection W WGS 84. Okay, that gives yeah. us access if you select that, it. then then there, we, we have, have option of that. We have two options there, no project and default. Which options we have to select? Uh, no, this one just give me one minute. Huh? Let me just figure it out. Range. Huh? Sorry. Yes, not this even when I'm not showing. Oh, sorry. We can find. Up look at that. Yes, yes. Huh? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, uh, so was anyone able to add the points here? Uh, does it show any points in your system? Uh, yes, we were able to show uh, see the points. I was, so, I was able to. Uh, so can you tell me like what exactly what did you click here the DMS coordinates? Yeah, in the geometry definition, uh, in the geometry CRS, yeah. I, yeah. I have selected the option project CRS EPSG four three two six WGS eighty four. Yeah, so, so geometry this CRS is yeah, so geometry CRS is my is open. Um, so normally what happens is uh, they detected themselves so we don't have to do anything let me just slip the here okay there's some there's some seems to be some bug here let me just download the file once more uh, sorry for the interruption here there's some bug I'm guessing how is the screen is looking after adding it can anybody show that yeah, can anyone show? Uh, so, you normally yeah, a point, a point data where there'll, there'll be circles around, I'm guessing. Sorry? No, 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 we have to show the year. Just, just give me one minute, I'll figure it out. This is how my can, is looking. Yeah, how is it looking? I'm not sure if it's right or wrong, I mean, no, no, no. So basically what will look like is something like this. Uh, let me just show you the screen. Uh, here's the slider. Um, so um, it will it, it, so it will see it will show something like this. Something like this. Okay. But I don't know why it's not showing, but this is the usual uh but let me just let me just figure it out. Let, just give me a couple of minutes and there's some bug here. Any other participant who is who is having the same kind of screen? Can anyone tell me? I think we could write this no data in the CSV file, I guess. Uh somebody has shared saying that it looks like this for them. Or uh, a John yeah. in case yes. we, yes. you can share. Does it does it look like that? 
Yeah, but uh, for me, uh, I downloaded the file for 48 hours. So after that, it is okay. okay so maybe it. there's some issue but with 24 hours. For 24. Yes, for 24 okay, hours, okay, it's not Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so it's a blank file, basically. So there's blank no data files. points there. Okay, yes. okay. Let me just see. Let me just check the open attribute table. Ha, ah, okay. My bad. My bad. So there's no there's no data point here. So hence, that's why it's not opening. So let, let us go ahead and do the 48 hours then. Let us just do the 48 hours. Sorry, my bad. I didn't check. I thought like the 24 hour, uh, the 24 hour thing should work. We just go ahead and do just download the 48 hours thing. Let us do that. Global 48. And now let me just refresh it. Huh. So now you have the 48 hours. Again, I'll just go to the layers thing. I'll add, add layer. Add delimited layer, text layer. I'll go there. I'll navigate to the file that we want here, which is Swamiverse Global 48. Open. Now, do we have something? Yeah, we have something here. So I'll share column types and everything that's being here. I'll just share the screen for just one minute. So I'll just share the screen. So everyone can see me now. Yeah. So now, so now you see. Yeah. yeah. So everyone can see. Oh no! Uh, I'm just saying it. It would be better if you just share your display instead of uh, a screen. Share so my you display. Don't to, uh... So you don't have to change every time. Okay. So what? Uh... Just share entire display, ah. not only a tab or. Okay, okay. So, just give me one minute. The they are saying uh, share the entire display so that you can. Okay, great. Anyway, so I'll just go ahead with it now. Uh, just one minute. Okay, so. So now you have, so, so so if you have gone to the layers part and then you have added the layer and you have done the add delimited text layer. So this dialog box is going to open and now you have the data points here. Now you have the data points here. So hopefully this should work this time. So now you go to X field and X field would be, uh, X field would be longitude and Y field would be latitude. And then we add, Uh, so it's going to take some time to uh, add all the pointers. But that's fine. Uh, load for some time and hopefully it should be there. No? Oh. Hi, Kula. Yeah, hi. I have shared one photo on the chat. Is it is it the way it should look? Just give me one minute. Just one minute. Yeah, it looks something like that. It looks something like that. Yeah, that's exactly how it's going to look. But I don't know why it's not again uh, some issue. Let me guess. No, no, no. For some reason, it's not. So does everyone have? So does everyone have that view? Yeah. Uh, for the geometry CRS, I think if you choose the other one. Uh, under the DMS coordinates, there is. Can you under Dropbox geometry CRS Dropbox? Mm -hmm. It's under the latitude, below yeah, latitude. Yeah, that, 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 that's fine. Yeah, so now we have it. Okay, fine. Okay. Great, great. So now we have it. So I'll just I'll just see it, what, what the bug was. Let me just, just do it once more. So now you go to vector, uh, sorry, you go to layer, add layer, add delimited text layer. Okay. 
48 hours open. Huh. So now if you if you uncheck this DMS coordinates, I think it automatically detects your X field and Y field. And that's what I wanted. So it automatically detects your longitude and la latitude. You don't have to do it yourself manually. And then I'm guessing just add it. Huh. Okay. So you have to uncheck the DMS coordinates, I'm guessing. Hopefully that should work. Uh, is anyone having any issues with loading it? Can comment on this. Uh, uh, you guys can uh, comment no. if anyone is having any issues. No issues with loading it, but uh, I just wanted to make check again because the, ah, lines, that's fine, that's fine. the lines uh, around my countries are very light or very transparent. So can, can you share uh, your screen once uh, Let me just see. Uh, I'm sorry, I cannot share my screen while other parts One, are interfering. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Just go ahead. Oh, you sure. can take a snip of it and put it in the chat box. Oh, yeah. Next time I'll do that. So that's my screen right now. So you see the boundaries are very light. Uh -huh. So what you do is just go to the layers, uh, to the country layers. Uh, just go to, just go there. Simple fill. Simple fill. So you click on simple fill. Yeah. And then fill style, stroke color. You go to stroke color here. Stroke color, no, 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 just the next one, stroke color. So after oh. fill style, you have stroke color, yeah. And you change the color, you, you change the slider to anything that you want, huh. and then just hit okay, apply, okay. Perfect, thank yeah. you. Uh, you might want to, uh, you know, decrease the, uh, the stroke width because it's really standing out. You might want to do that as well, but sure. What when, whenever you get the free time, just go ahead and just just do it by yourself. Well, let me just get back here. Okay, so now finally we have the data points here. So we have two. Uh, to summarize, basically we have two layers here. One is the country layer. This is the any ten AM admin zero countries, and this one is the fire point, and this is what we want. Okay, so let me do some styling here just to get a better display going for us. Um, Pulaha? Is this, yeah, sure. Just yeah, please question. go ahead. So yeah, it, yeah, yeah. Everything is in place for me. I'm pretty. Everything is in place yeah. for me, but uh, the add button is not active. How do I? Yeah. So what you do is, uh, can you share your screen once, sir? I can. Pratik? Yeah. Yes, I can. Just a second. Uh, I'll share a, share a screenshot, right? Huh. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, uploading. There's a yeah. checkbox that you need to mark un under the uh, DA DMS something. Um, okay, so this is the add delimited layer, right? Um, yeah. Yes, must be selected. Ha, huh. so, uh, sorry, I didn't get in a Prati, Prati. right? Yeah. Yes, yes. Hi, Prati. So you see, Hi. you have the X field and the Y field, longitude, longitude, latitude. Yeah. And you also have the geometry CRS, which is an invalid projection. Ah, okay. Okay, so you go, so you hit that, uh, this, uh, this inverted triangle thing. Yeah, yeah. And there you have an option called, I think, WGS 84, 4326. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. EPSG uh, 4326, just click on that. Uh, EPSG 4326, see, there is project yeah. CRS, uh, EPSG uh -huh. 4326, then there is default. Uh, so CRS. just click on, yeah, so, so just click on the 4326. No, there's a project uh, or default. Project default. Uh, project or default. Yeah, they both are the same. Otherwise, so what I am using is let me just see. Yeah, we I am using an EPSG four three two six. So let me just do it once more. Okay. Yeah. So the geometry. So 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 the geometry CRS is going to read something like this: EPSG four three two six hyphen WGS eighty four. Uh, no, Pulaha, we have got project as well as default with the same yeah, number. The rest is the same. 
yeah, yeah so let me just see so project the first ha huh, so either way so project crs cpsg 4326 wgs 84 should also work or you should okay. also have the just the option of epsg 4326 wgs 84 is the same thing all right i'll select the project uh, let me uh, just let, let, let me just share the screen let me just share this again uh, can, sure. can everyone open oh, okay. so let me just share the screen one minute This one, no, this one. Yeah, this one. So now everyone can see my screen, right? So Prati, can you click, here, can you click so, on the, the option? Uh, can you click the? Ah, so, 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 so let me just uh, just one minute. I'll show you for once more. How do I share my my screen? Here. Uh, here. This entire screen, yeah. Sure. Okay, so let me just. Huh. So everyone can see my screen now. Yeah. Add layer, add delimited text layer. Yeah. You have the file name, which is this 48 hours open. And now, a Pratik, so you have the geometry yeah. CRS here, right? Yes. So let me just open it and I'll show you. So see, you have the project CRS EPSG 4326. You also have the EPSG 4326 WGS 84. Oh, if the okay, option so no, is not... not uh, ha, I'm so only getting either, three options. So, yeah. Ha, for the timing, you might get just three options. All right. All right. I'll go every project CRS. I'll, Thanks, though, my headphone. Let me just, just, give, me, just give me one minute. One minute, huh? No, my voice is this computer voice is not. Can I, uh, everyone hear me now? Yes. Everyone can hear me, right? Uh, I have some issue with the anyway. So, uh, so now you have the geometry CRS, and you have the EPSG four three two six and the project CRS. So just go ahead, click on the EPSG four three two six. Pratik, can you okay. uh, deploy it? Can I vote? Oh, I, I can't hear you anymore. Can you hear me? Uh, either way, I think we can just proceed. Uh, I'll figure this out later. Uh, I'll select the... Yeah, I, I can, I can get it now. All right, yeah, all right. Just, just, just go ahead. Tell me. No, I was just saying, let's just resume. Uh, I'll just select project CRS EPSG. I don't have the other options. I'm only getting three options in this. Okay. One uh, is project, okay. one is default, and one is of something else. Ah, so, just so, so, so just click on project CRS. Just click on yeah. project CRS. Yeah. Uh, done. So let me just add it from my end as well. Actually, when you browse it, it it, it comes uh, EPSG, as you say, without yeah, project. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But again, I don't get the layers. So now you so now you have this. So now you have yeah. Let me just style it a, a, a little bit as well. Ah. Uh, so you have to style it here. You can go, you can change the size. I'll just keep it to one or 0.5. And I'll do away with the colors. Anyway, I'll just keep the colors for the time being. It's going to load for some time. So now you see, you have changed the size and everything. Now it looks a little better as well. So one of the most important things about QGIS is, and that's where it's, power lies, uh, that's where its impact lies, is that you can also, as the name suggests, QGIS full form is quantum GIS. 
so you can quantify the data here i mean this is all great for viewing we we know that amazon has a lot of fire activities happening in the last 48 hours you also have the southern part of africa uh, central southern part of africa uh, probably kenya and all these countries which are also having a lot of uh, uh, fire activities we can see a lot of fire activities there but i want to know country wise how many how many fires have happened that is basically the the main crux of the story like i want to know country wise how many fire activities have happened so for that basically to quantify this whole thing the spatial data what we are going to do is you go to so now you have these two layers you go to vector here you have the vector thing the vector option here top of your screen you go to vector and then Yeah, so you go to vector and then you go to analysis tools. And then you you click on the count points in a polygon. Just click on that. And there you have the polygons and you have the points. So in the polygons, you click this, any 10, 10M admin zero countries, and you have the points which is so which is the fire data. So the so so next time when you do the logic is basically your polygon is going to be the country the the the, the country shape file and your points is going to be the fire data basically so that is the logic just in case so going forward if you ever get confused just remember this logic your polygon is the country one and the points is the fire data and then you hit run now it's going to load. And we have an error. But what is this yes. error? Same error I record. Yeah. Is everyone having the same error? Yeah, I think yeah. we have the same error. So I won't get into the details of what this error is. I want you guys to see what this error is, but I'll show you how to fix this error. I'll show you how to fix this error. But I want you to show, I want you to research it on yourself. Please fix the geometry or change the invalid features filtering. So you do a search on invalid features filtering and you will find what the error is. I want you to do that research, but I'll show you how to fix this error. So close this dialog box, count points and polygon, close this. Now you have this thing called processing. Uh, like in the top, the top, con, uh, the, uh, the top, top, top part of your screen, you have this option called processing. You hit, you click processing. You hit toolbox. Then you type this check validity. Check validity. Is everyone with me on this? If you have any problem, do let us know. Check validity. And you click on check validity. And everything remains the same except you change the input layer from the fire from the fires data to the countries. Please go ahead, sir. Who has a question? Can you please come again. Can you please come again to sure, um, sure, after sure. the after the tool. Sorry. After the toolbox, what we? Ha. Huh, okay. I'll 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 show that once again. So you have processing. You have toolbox, and then you search check validity. Check validity. Check validity. Okay. You click, you click on check validity, a new dialog box opens. And this one has this one has the country data country shape file. So you change in the input layer, you change. So if if you have this as your default in the input layer, change it to country country shape file. Any damn country shape file. Okay. And don't do anything else. Don't do anything else. Just hit the run button. Just hit the run button. Mm. Africa has some of the different color here. Yeah, same, same. It is coming same for me. Yeah. What What is happening, sir? I can see that Africa, one country, I guess it's Egypt or something. Yeah. What about yes. it? Yeah. 
it is ah, so you have so you have yeah so you have three layers right you have valid output you have in, so it creates three layers basically so once you hit run after it yeah. does the processing and everything you will see in the layers panel you will see a valid output you will see invalid output you will see error, error output, output. Yes. yeah mm -hmm. so everyone has all those three layers great so you just ignore those layers we have nothing to do with that just ignore that and now in the same processing toolbox that has opened, in the same processing toolbox that has opened, you search, you type fix geometries. I'll repeat that once more fix geometries. Fix geometries. Okay. Is everyone with me on this? Yeah. Okay, great. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you have the input layer now. In the input layer, you you select that again the country, the uh, the original country data, the uh, the original country file that is which is ten any ten m admin zero countries. You you select that, and then again just hit okay, the run button, you. and then just hit the run button. Just hit the run button. You don't have to save it because it shows the fixed geometries. If you want to, if you want to save it somewhere. I have kept it as create temporary layer because it's good for practicing. It's good for practicing. The more you use, because a lot of times you're going to face this problem with shape files and you have to use this process. So do remember this process. That, so that's why I'm not saving it. I'm not saving it so that I, 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 because I keep repeating, I keep using this step over and over and over again, because that, that's how I, I, I can remember it. So you just hit the run button. And you close. And now you have a layer called fixed geometries. What you can do, I'll keep the layers for the time being, but I'll uncheck them. The error output, invalid output, valid output. I'll uncheck them. I'll just keep the fixed geometries checked. I'll keep I'll keep the uh, the fire data also checked. And I'll uh, and this one, the any ten admin zero countries uh, that uh, that layer, I'll also uncheck that. And another thing that I'll do is I'll bring it on top. I'll keep, I'll, I'll bring the uh, fire data layer on top. So now you see, so it's all about layers game. So if you want something, so if you want something on top, so that has to be the topmost layer. And then you have the countries, which is the fixed geometries. You get that right, logic? Hello. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Hi. By mistake, I guess my browser box has been, is, is closed. So how can I open it back? Uh, can you show me the screen once, sir? Okay. Uh, okay, so you don't have the browser, right? Okay. Uh, okay. You have to go to the view panel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And from there, you have to click on panels. Go. Let's go here. Panels, panels, yeah. And then you have to click on the browser panel, like check the browser box. Yeah. You also need the layers panel. You also need the layers panel. Okay, I'll put it here. Also, one more thing, I mean, that is one way of seeing, one way of doing this. The other way, uh, another shortcut way I'll show you is if you ever have this problem of brow no browser panel or layers panel, you just click here and here's the panel thing. I have to share. Okay, just one minute. I'll just share the screen. I'll close this. And if you have, ever have a missing panel, so you click here. I'll show it once more. You click here, and then you have the panels, you have toolbars. So all you have to do is the browser panel. You click on this, and you have the layers panel. You click on this. So that's another shortcut that you guys can use. I'll go ahead now with the tutorial. So now we have, so now we have figured out how to fix our shape file. So now let's again go back to how can we quantify it and how do we quantify it is the same process. Again, you go to vector, you go to analysis tool and you go to count points in polygon, count points in polygon. And here in the polygons, instead of the countries, now we are going to use the fixed geometries voila shape file. You're going to use the fixed geometry shape file layer. It's very important to remember this. You have to select the fixed geometries. 
not that any m that we were using earlier. You have to use the fixed geometries. And then the points, you have the, you have error output and you have the Suomi. So this is the fire data, okay? And here you can, yeah, you can here come down point, uh, yeah, num points. You can change the uh, column name to anything that you want. I'll keep to num points, which is the default thing that QGIS gives. And then we hit the run. I'm going to count, let it process. Great. I'll close it. And here you have the layer now, which is count, which is again, another shape layer, but we don't want the shape layer. Okay. We want to save it. We want to export it as a CSV for our own analysis. And I'm guessing everyone has an Excel, uh, the Excel software installed in your, in your system. If you don't just follow along, but do install it later, just in case you guys don't have it. So I'll, I'll show it once again, you go to this count thing that that's the layer that, that, uh, that QGIS will create for you guys. Right click export save feature as uh, name it, whatever you want. Uh, you have to save it here like this, save as whatever, uh, fire activities, 48 hours. I'll save it in the downloads and here the format you have to do CSV it in some, in some systems in might show ESRI shape file, geo package, whatever, but we, we need it as a CSV It's very important CSV. That's what we need. And I'm going to just hit okay. And here you have the progress bar. Now we go to where we had saved that. In my case, it's the, uh, I saved it in download. Fire activities. Let's just open. Now you have the, so here you have the sovereignty, which is Indonesia. If you can see the columns, Indonesia. Let me see how many Indonesia has. Num points. So num points is the last column here and they had 581 fire activities, 581. Let me just uh, copy these two fields in some other year. I'll just copy it. Huh? Sorry? Hola. Can you yeah, come yeah. again with this again, saving and all? Ha, Actually, ha, just, just the, one the, the main file was taking a lot of time to, you know, come the count file was taking time to. Ha, ha, no, issues, no issues. I'll just show you guys once more. Let me just minimize it. Okay. So I'll just show you. Uh, so which part, uh, sir, you want me to explain once more? Oh, just the saving part. Okay. The saving part. I'll just, I'll just show you the saving part. So you have the count. Right click on it, export, save feature as, that's what you got to do, save feature as, then you have the format, you have to select CSV and then save it in whatever file name you want, in whatever folder you want, that's absolutely fine. You can uncheck the columns that you want, but I would suggest keep the sovereignty, the sovereignty column here and keep the num points column here. And, and you can uncheck whatever columns you want and then click hit. Okay. I'm not going to do it because I've already saved it, but then click. Okay. Is that fine? Has everyone followed me on this part? Great. I'll what go ahead. The sovereignty column. Please come again with that. Uh, just, just search for the time being, just follow along Just save the file. I'll, sh I'll show it to you once more. Just uh, were you able to save it? I'm, I'm doing it. Yeah. Yeah, just save it. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. It's nothing important, but going forward, you might just do it. But let me just get back to the Excel file now. So now we have the, so now we have the sovereignty and we have the num points here, which I've copied. And now let me see like which country had the most number of fire points. So I'll hit filter descending. Start. 
apply filter. And yeah, we can see Brazil had the highest, and it has one more than 100,000, it's 14788. Then you have Bolivia, then you have Democratic Republic of Congo, like we, we saw like in the map itself. But in a nutshell, this is what I, I wanted to show you guys, basically, and I'll uncheck the count file here. This is what I wanted to show you guys, how you can quantify spatial data. Did everyone follow along? Is anyone having any issues now? Okay. So Samir sir wants us to show the, uh, one minute. Polygons. Yeah, actually, actually, I got it. Uh, I did it. No, oh, no, you no. did it, sir. Okay, yes. great, great. So that and that is the best way to go. That's the if you can do it, like it's great. And that is the best way to go. Great. Mm, Fula, can I share my screen once? If, if, yeah, yeah, sure. Allow sure. me. Sure. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm just uh, repeating once more. So for the timing, the the session ends here. The live session ends here. Next, the uh, the next session is all going to be how we can export this map as well. How we can export this map. So after saving saving this this point as compile points, like I save it with the name. Ah, uh, ah, that is fine. That is fine. That is absolutely fine. What you'll do next is just go to the system where you're okay. Uh -huh, just so you are i i am not because that that pop up menu did not came where i have to save it in my text uh, in my computer okay so so just go to count just go to count sir just go to count right click export save feature as okay so file name whatever whatever file name you want to do and just hit okay okay this okay oh, no wait 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 so you have those uh, three dots in the file name, the three dots here, three dots. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So you save wherever you want to. And you hit okay. So now we have, I have HY also. Yeah, so now you go to so, the system. You can you can do the filtering. You can do the filtering here. I would suggest go to your system and open it in an Excel file. So you go to that folder where you have saved it. Yeah. Yeah. So now you can do the analysis. So the column that we are looking for is num points. Num points. Uh, so uh, so now uh, Kiran ma'am will just have a word with you guys. So she'll take over. Uh, sorry, just before if you just just give us just give us two minutes, sir. Just give us two minutes. I'll I'll get back to you on this. So, Pulaha, can I repeat this or no? Yeah. yeah. So, Pulaha, I have a question. Am I audible now? Yeah. 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 So, uh, so Pulaha, what I could understand was that you had tried to uh, add two layers of data. Yeah. In yeah. And the purpose was to map it on forest fires. Yeah. On a map. On a map. Yes. Yeah. And along with that, we're also able to quantify the quantify. Of forest fires. Yeah, okay, why I'm right. doing this is because uh, we can create a simple map using other tools as well. Okay, but the running of Cruzia is we're able to add multiple data points, multiple attributes on a single map, and also quantify it. That's the advantage of using Cruzia for analysis. And so today, Pula has just shown you how to extract first by data from a website, from a portal, and then plot it on a map. And also quantified, okay. So and you can what Kiran Ram is trying to say is, uh, you can do a lot of maps. So now you have Flourish and you have Data Wrapper and all those uh, websites. You can do you can do the map and all. That is fine if you have the data. 
But yeah. saying you want to do your own analysis and also visualize it, that's where CGIS comes. And, and now there are multiple stories that can you can find. And there are here. multiple stories that you can come out with. In fact, right now yes. the first story that comes to my mind is that you can do a story on Brazil and how Brazil is having the most number of forest fires. That's in a very is. ecologically yes. sensitive part as yes. Amazon. That's what. So the idea was using this was. You know, the data set that is there right in front of you, but now you want a story by using analysis through UGIS. Okay, that's the purpose of this workshop. And so, this is the by the end of the first session, we we're able to use UGIS to tell a story on forest fires, and the story is just out in front of you. And this is just one of the polite shared with you. There are other stories as well. For example, African continent is also having forest fires. You clearly see from the map. Is it right, Pula? Yeah. Yes. Okay, maybe if you quantify the maps in the African continent, you'll find the countries have the most number of forest fires right now over there. So, so there are multiple data stories that can get from the same data set using QGIS. Okay, so you do US data, do data extraction, cut stories from there, and then you make an attempt to communicate to your audience. And it depends on the message you want to convey. And the, but the purpose is that says this simple tool can be used to convey multiple stories on environmental issues. And that's the purpose of this workshop. Okay, I know it's too technical, but please be patient. Today is the first day, and this is just a start. So don't get disheartened. Okay, if you see the models in the, uh, uh, in the uh, that you have posted over there, things are very clear. In fact, in fact, I will also ask Laha to give you a step by step guide for Windows computer. Okay, there's a request that we should also give you a guide on Windows computer. We'll do that. Okay, so I hope it was useful to you. Please, yeah. please be patient. And the second session will be on day after that, first of October, right? Yeah, yeah, Same yeah. time. Okay. Yeah. If you have any doubt, please so, mail the doubt to us. Ground to post your doubt on Moodle platform. There's a discussion forum over there. Just feel free to write back to us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other so, question? So for the next session, just I'll just add one thing. Uh Kiran ma'am. So for the yes. next session, we are going to export this map that we have just created. And what I would like you to do is uh, either you can keep this, either you can keep QGIS open because otherwise we'll close the files. Or what I can suggest you is just follow along. You have yeah. the fixed, you have the fixed geometries layer. Please share your screen. Yeah, I'm sharing my screen. So now you have the fixed geometries, fixed geometries layer. Okay. Oh, so now we are done with the quantifying. So that shouldn't be an issue. Okay, fine, no, no, that's totally fine. I'll, I'll 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 repeat the steps in the next year. So, but what we're going to do is we are going to uh, export this app as a PNG or a JPEG. That's going to take some time, so we won't be able to finish with this session. The next session is all is all going to be about this and Coropleth map. And also, I'll just add one last thing. That error that we received, that error that we received, what I would like you to do is just go to this website all. Yeah, QGIS tutorial. Just bookmark this. Just bookmark this page. And, and every time you have a problem with this, when you get a, uh, when you're trying to quantify something and you get this problem, the error that we uh, face, handling invalid geometries, this is the error. Handling invalid geometries, just bookmark this page. This page has all the steps that you would need. And this is my go to website. Anytime I face any problem, this is my go-to website. It's called QGIL, QGIS Tutorials and Tips. It's by a QGIS enthusiast called Ujwal Gandhi. You can follow him on Twitter as well. I follow him on Twitter. I have learned a lot of things from, from him. So this is a great resource, in fact, for you to learn QGIS. So just go ahead and browse through it if you have any issues. I'll just share the link uh, here. Share the link. I'll share it. Okay. So I think we are almost done. Uh, Kiran, ma'am, you have anything to add? 
Yeah, so Kiran Man will do the final game. Great. So uh, I don't know why this class is all going to be about. Uh, we have a discussion forum on Moodle platform. You can post your doubts over there. It's uh, it's a common platform, but we'll also learn from your doubts and queries. Okay, so let feel free to post your doubt. Let's not hesitate, and uh, I think we'll all benefit from this popular session. You know, so, all the best. See you on first of Thank October. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the thanks, Kieran, ma'am.